This is The Three Magic Ks of Karate, Episode 3, Kumite. Kumite, literally translated, means grappling hands. The first thing to understand about kumite is that it does not mean fighting, as they're both completely different. Kumite in martial arts is sparring. Kumite is used as a means of teaching students to use the techniques they learn within their training, but however, fighting is basically a way of saying no rules, which is the type of scenario expected from a street confrontation. There are, however, organized fighting events, which consist of fights in a ring or arena with some rules that both competitors must abide by. This is referring to combat sports such as boxing, Muay Thai, MMA, Taekwondo, and of course, karate matches, with the victory at the end of it often being some kind of personal gain such as trophies, medals, to reward the efforts. There is also different types of tournament, full contact, semi-contact, and no contact. When it comes to the subject of kumite, some people tend to frown upon it because instinctively they might think it means to fight and they worry about injury. But as mentioned before, it is an exercise to develop control of techniques. Most kumite at a dojo is conducted in a controlled manner. This means to focus more on accuracy and timing rather than power. Kumite can be performed in a number of different ways, such as set, semi, or free sparring, depending on experience and what's to be learned. Sparring at most dojos is practiced with extremely strict safety guidelines so that students learn from sparring rather than feel intimidated by it. And some won't even allow students to start sparring until they have graded to a certain level where they can show basic understanding of the techniques with an increase in fitness and confidence. Beginners will usually only practice light coordination drills with their partner to develop focus, distance and timing. Drill training is used to help those who are maybe not so confident or in turn it helps those who have confidence but lack skill. These drills range from training footwork, evasive skills, and learning countering and defensive tactics. It is in my belief that kumite plays a vital role in karate and all martial arts, because without it, students cannot practice their techniques against a live moving target. Hitting a heavy bag, a makiwara, or pads is good for stamina and training and resistance, but the equipment does not hit back. In a real life situation, you would not expect the opponent to know much about martial arts, but the pace of a situation is replicated through sparring, allowing students to practice moving fast and protecting themselves, learning to face the opposition, but without fear of being dominated. By keeping kumite friendly and controlled, everyone can learn from each other, gain confidence and fitness, therefore enjoying their karate training. Kumite is the heart and soul of practicing karate. It is the one thing that absolutely needs to be done in order for a karateka to improve and understand how to use karate in a real life situation. You can do kata, kihon, skip rope, bag work, work the pads, but if you don't spar, then you won't get better as a fighter, plain and simple. So kumite should be looked forward to by karate practitioners and not shunned. It's the chance to really use what you've learned from Kihon and Kata, and the only solid way to mark your progress. Sometimes the idea of what is to be achieved during a Kumite session is lost on students. More often than not, I see egos get in the way of actually trying to achieve a goal and something out of the session. The purpose of sparring is to make both you and your partner better. You should be trying to work and flow with one another, while at the same time developing better reaction time and enhancing your skills. Remember, kumite is not fighting. There is a large difference between the two. 
The dojo should not be your proven ground. That's what the ring or mat is for. This can be a difficult thing to keep in mind in the heat of the moment. When you feel someone lands a good shot on you, it's natural to pick up the pace, hit harder, and get those points back. That being said, there is a time and place for hard sparring, but high intensity kumite should not be a normal session. That doesn't mean you can't work hard, it just means you have to use self-control. Sparring hard and beating one another to a pulp all the time is only going to get you injured and keep you out of the dojo. So keep these concepts and types of sparring in mind when training and when you do kumite. Remember to always work with your partners, listen to your sensei and keep progressing towards your goals. Thank you for watching. That was the final episode of the three magic K's of karate. I hope you enjoyed the series and if you like what you see, please subscribe to the Dojo Pilgrim YouTube channel. Please give this video a thumbs up, write your views in the comments and write what type of videos you guys want to see next. Thank you for watching. Us.